Welcome to your camper. This will be your home while you're traveling. This tour will familiarize you with the camper so you know a bit more about it and where to find everything. It may seem like a lot to take in at first, but don't worry, you'll be a pro within a day. Let's take a look. This camper is an automatic Iveco daily. It features a key start ignition. To start the engine, put the gear in park or neutral and turn the key until all dash lights appear. When the glow light goes off, put your foot on the brake, turn the key further and start the engine. This camper features a reversing camera, which will show on the dash screen when in reverse. Make sure someone is guiding you when reversing and parking. Chances are, this camper is bigger than you're used to driving. There are some handy stickers on the windscreen to remind you of the camper height, length and maximum speed allowed when driving. This screen also features GPS navigation to help you travel around with ease. We don't recommend driving at dusk or night time, so be sure to arrive at your overnight destination before then. When parked up for the night, always exit the vehicle with keys in hand through the driver's side door and lock the driver's cab so the vehicle fully switches off. This will avoid a flat battery in the morning. This camper is fitted with the Iveco media system that you can connect your smartphone to via Bluetooth and access phone calls and music. The lever to release the bonnet is under the dashboard on the passenger side. In the passenger side door pocket is the first aid kit. We hope you won't need it, but it is there just in case. If you do open it, you have purchased and can pay for it when you return to the branch. The handy quick reference guide is also in this door pocket. In New Zealand, the power lead is located here. Moving outside, here is the power inlet to plug into 240 volt power at a campsite. This is needed to use the microwave, if fitted, and internal power points. It also supplies power to the reverse cycle air conditioning in Australian campers. Plugging into power will charge the 12 volt house battery. Next is the compartment where you can access the toilet cassette to empty it into an authorised dump station. Don't worry, it's very quick and easy to do. If your handbrake looks like this, you have a collapsible handbrake. If you can move the handbrake freely without the ratchet sound, it is already engaged. Check the handbrake light is illuminated on the dash. To release the handbrake, bring it to the up position, lift gently upwards and depress the button at the same time, pushing it back toward the floor. Make sure the handbrake light is off on the dash. To engage the handbrake, lift the handle upwards and listen for a ratchet sound. The handbrake light will appear on the dash. If you have a camper with front swivel seats, the collapsible handbrake needs to be down so it doesn't get damaged. Make sure the handbrake is fully engaged before lowering it. Here is the LPG bottle compartment. This supplies gas to the interior stove and hot water system. Make sure the gas bottle is turned off when it's not being used and before driving. We've filled the LPG bottle up for you and you'll need to refill it before returning, unless you have purchased the express return pack or pre-purchase gas option. The shut-off valves are also in this compartment. At the end of the camper is the water heater system. Below this is the wastewater outlet. The hose to empty the tank is in the camper. There are two exterior storage lockers, a small one on this side and a larger one around on the passenger side. In either locker will be the freshwater hose, wastewater hose and other general equipment you may need during your trip. Next to the larger locker on the passenger side is the inlet for the freshwater tank. We have filled the tank for you, ready to go. Above the windows is the shade awning. The pole to set this up is inside the camper. The fuel inlet is beside the passenger door. To access it, the passenger door must be open. This camper takes diesel fuel. We filled up the tank for you and you'll need to refill it before returning, unless you have purchased the express return pack or pre-purchase fuel option. Before moving inside, pull out the step for easy access. There is a screen door that can be detached from the main entry door. On the left wall as you enter is the entertainment unit. 
This is a media player only and doesn't have access to television signal, but it's great for watching DVDs or movies from a USB. The fire extinguisher is located either underneath the media player or behind the front passenger seat. Behind the driver's cab are seats for the other two passengers. Seat belts must be worn at all times when driving. This is also where a child seat or booster seat can be fitted. The driver's cab seats can swivel to the back on some models. At the base of the seat is the 12 volt isolation switch. This needs to be on at all times to use the 12 volt appliances such as fridge, house lights, water pump, toilet flush, range hood, media player and house USB ports. These USB ports are located next to the isolation switch. In some campers, there are additional USB ports located at the end of the kitchen bench and in the dinette. Since they are powered by the 12 volt house battery, they will work when you are not plugged into the 240 volt mains power. Above the seat is the 12 volt control panel. Turn these switches on only when you need them. If you have a fridge switch, leave that on at all times. The house battery is separate to the camper engine battery. So if the house battery is getting low, don't worry, the camper will still be able to start. In New Zealand, there is a diesel heater dial here. Australian campers don't have this, as they feature a 240 volt reverse cycle air conditioner instead. The kitchen area includes a fridge, gas stove, grill, sink and a microwave. To access the range hood switches, the cupboard above must be open. Below the kitchen bench in the drawers are utensils, cutlery, plates, cups, bowls and coffee mugs. In the cupboard next to them is the bin along with pots, pans and other kitchen equipment. In the overhead cupboards are the electrical appliances and extra storage. To use these appliances, as well as the microwave where fitted, and in Australia the reverse cycle air conditioning, you must be plugged into 240 volt power. In some campers, the switch that powers the microwave is in a separate location. This must be switched on for the microwave to operate. There is storage in the overhead cupboards as well as under the seats. Make sure the drawers and cupboards are locked before driving. Here is the bathroom. Don't forget to flick on the water pump and toilet flush switches before using the facilities. In some campers, the toilet switch will be labelled spare. When parked up, set up the rear dining table. At night, this area converts to a double bed. The second double bed slides down from above and is operated electronically. Use the ladder provided to access this bed. Please do not place luggage or heavy items on the top bed. There are curtains all the way around for your privacy. To finish, we'd like to share some helpful tips for your trip. We recommend you plug into 240 volt power on your first night and then every two or so days for the house battery to fully charge. The speed of the 12 volt battery drainage will depend on the climate and how often it is used. A full charge takes between 14 to 16 hours and needs to be done at a campground. The water gauge in the camper doesn't always give an accurate read of how full the tanks are. Top up the fresh water and empty the wastewater every one to two days. Empty the toilet cassette every one to two days or as needed. The wastewater tank and toilet cassette must be emptied at an authorised dump station. If you are staying at a holiday park, you will have access to one there. Otherwise, use the THL Road Trip app to search for the closest one. Top up and empty at every opportunity and you won't have to worry about a thing. Lastly, always remember, have your keys with you when you are outside the camper. We want to make sure you're completely comfortable before you leave the branch. Please don't be shy in asking your branch host any questions and let them know if anything doesn't seem right with your camper. Once on the road, remember that there's a bunch of helpful videos on your THL Road Trip app. And if stuck, you can call our on-road care team 24-7. On behalf of all the crew at THL, have an incredible adventure.